John Milkey, uh, Chief Executive of Genetic Signatures. Uh, thanks for joining us here on Ausbiz. Um, first of all, tell us about this IP that you've got. Yeah, hi David, uh, pleasure, pleasure to be on. Um, the IP is really around our three base technology, which Claude mentioned. I should just start by saying we're a technology company. Genetic Signatures invests in technology. We're focusing on infectious diseases. And the reason are these are the microorganisms that make us sick. We know we've heard about them recently, obviously, during the pandemic. Some of them have quite a high mortality rate. So we've applied our technology to design tests that are better able to pick up these infectious organisms. So our technology, our three base technology, is a molecular technology and that's really important because that's considered the gold standard when you're looking for um, infectious diseases because and all that means is that we're looking directly for the dna or the rna of the organism but three base was invented and developed here in australia it is designed to develop these organisms whether they be bacteria or protozoan or fungal and the real key is that our three base technology is not affected by most mutations that occur. And I guess we're all familiar with the variants that we're hearing now about SARS-CoV-2. So our technology is, is less susceptible to that. Mm. But moreover, they allow us to make test kits which are low cost, which are accurate. Uh, and we all and we do that because, you know, if you if you're better able to detect it, if you more accurately can detect an organism or more quickly detect an organism, you're better able to uh, administer treatment or in fact begin yeah. isolation to stop the spread of that organism. So, so is Luke Winchester right that, that COVID gave you an opportunity to actually, and, and your testing during COVID, um, to really test your platform, to present it to the market, but say, hey, it's not just for COVID, um, we can do all these other things. So it was, it's COVID, for one of a better description, has been a great marketing tool for you. He was, he was very accurate. So the, we are in expansion phase. Genetic Signatures is taking our significant homegrown success and we are exporting that now, particularly focused in Europe and the US. We're underway there with teams there and customers there using our kits every single day. We have quadrupled more now the number of instruments genetic signatures branded instruments that we have in the field and that is correct that was on the back of the pandemic so we were able to gain new customers for our COVID product as a company we were very quick to develop a, a test for COVID and get regulatory approvals for that in europe and australia and roll that out winning new customers along the way but you're right there's much more to it so we specialize in what we call syndromic tests so the person who has the sore throat and the runny nose could have COVID, but they could have any number of other things. And some of them are significant. They still have a mortality rate like influenza. So the test kits that we produce can look for 20 odd targets, whether they be for respiratory infections or enteric infections. So the patient goes away with having a diagnosis, not just you don't have this one particular organ. Right. So the pandemic allowed us to expand our customer base with our own equipment that we've developed again here in Australia. And these kits that we had before the pandemic are really now well placed to leverage off that increased customer base that we have. So um, a great example is your three year deal with, uh, um, with the health service in Wales. That's a great example. And it's a really good example for a number of reasons. One, it speaks to the technology. And at the time they said, we won that contract because of our flexibility. And that in part comes from three base. We also won that because of our throughput. So we have implemented our technology in a high throughput capacity. So we're targeting labs that can do for COVID 10,000 samples a day. We're able, we are able to do that. The really significant thing about Wales though, it's not for respiratory testing, it's for enteric testing. And this is a product that we've had for more than seven years. So it's something that it was actually our most mature product and it's what we brought to market some time ago. So it's showing how the pandemic uh, increased our exposure, particularly overseas. And we're now winning contracts that aren't just respiratory, but some of our older kits. Okay. And importantly, we have seven kits coming for other indications, whether that's for sexually transmitted infections or for, um, for antibiotic resistance, uh, there, there are seven more kits coming, which right. will all be revenue generating for the company. 
And importantly, they all work in exactly the same way. So if that lab in Wales wanted to introduce another one of our tests, they're effectively already trained. Okay. So that's the contract uh, that you've done in Wales, which is, which is terrific. Um, when these medtech, biotech companies come up on, on the call, our experts always say, hey, look at them as at mining explorers. Um, they, they might have the idea, but the road to production, the road to revenue generation can be a long -term time in the future. So you've got to be patient. But genetic signatures, you're actually producing, aren't you? You're actually generating revenue. How much revenue are generating at, at the moment? Are you close to cash flow positive? Um, we are. We so last financial year we we had twenty eight million in sales. Uh, we were profitable. We had about one point eight million in sales for the half year that we've reported. We had twenty one point eight million in sales, and that's an increase seventeen odd percent on the on the previous right. half. That half was profitable um, to the. Yep. 4.7 million just in the half, first half of this year. We were cash flow, cash inflows of about 7 million. So I think we really do have a proven business model. Yeah. And that's really important for investors, as you said, that want to explore the thesis. I think we have proven that business model and we have lots of opportunities in front of us as we enter those overseas markets that we're focused on, particularly Europe and the US. Yep. Um, question from Luke Winchester was the lumpiness of the revenue first half seems to be better than the second half. Why is that? Um, I think I think Claude had it right. There was a little bit of COVID revenue. We, we know in particular the two Christmases that have passed had um, yeah. some outbreaks locally uh, and that did contribute to revenue. It's also, um, there is some seasonality what we do traditionally. There is seasonality. Obviously we know about the winter period is, is, um, is, is abundant for respiratory infection. So we do see a little bit of seasonality, but the seasonality that you're talking about came from really focusing on COVID only testing. And as we transition out of that, we are replacing COVID only testing with multiplexed or looking for a, a broad range of organisms from that one patient right. sample, effectively, effectively the one test. Yeah, so you've got the tests that have had traction, the COVID tests, You've got these other tests that are starting to earn revenue that have been around for seven years, as you explained, like the um, health um, department in Wales has taken up. And you're saying you've got another seven coming this year. That's correct. And we've quadrupled, as I said, the quadrupled the number of instruments that we have in the field. So these are the instruments that allow us to achieve very efficient workflows, sure. high throughput workflows, allowing customers to do hundreds and yeah. if not thousands of patient samples every momentum. single day. Really good momentum. So where did technology uh, that you've developed, where's it come from? Where's it, where, what's all your background? It was developed, as I said, in Australia, it was developed in genetic signatures. It's, it's a proprietary technology of ours. People think we're a new company, David. Perhaps this speaks to your point before about the time to get to revenue. We're actually over 20 years old. We've been listed on the stock market for seven years. So we have a deep history. And that technology was developed more than 10 years ago. So that's why we've been able to develop these kits, what we call syndromic kits that look for a large number of organisms along our journey. So we have um, issued patents on that technology and we are just uh, right. producing kits that really leverage that advantage that we have, and um, both in coverage and in throughput. Um, but yep. at, at the end of the day, they're just simply test kits. Our customers are pathology labs. They buy the test kits, they use them. They're reimbursed through um, usually government subsidies and, and they, they pay us usually on 30 day terms. It's, right. a, it's a pretty easy yeah. business model. Yeah, FDA approval, you're trying to get through at the moment. What stage is that up to? So we've, we've, we've told the market we're putting our first product through FDA and we have nominated um, that to be our enteric protozoan kit. So this looks for stomach infections or gastroenteritis, which is caused by protozoan targets. That is our first kit because we've identified a gap in the market. So the traditional method of doing that is looking down a microscope and trying to identify these protozoan cysts in, in, under the microscope. We, we have a molecular test, as I said, and we can look for eight targets. And that is 
um, five more than the closest competitor. So we are hoping to displace the traditional method or at least um, rely on molecular methods much more than they have been in the mm. States. We're currently in the clinical trial stage and that trial is being wrapped up uh, in the coming weeks. We then have some work to do to look at discrepant analysis between the, the, the what we call the predicate device and then we, we submit that to the FDA and once cleared, we're, um, we're cleared for marketing that in the US. And we do know there's about five and a half million of these tests that are done every year in the US, the traditional tests. Um, and we, we, we believe uh, we, we have filled an unmet need. We are aiming to win 40% of that market um, in, the, in, the, in the first five years post-release. Wow, okay.